How much capital have you invested in the grocery department? Celine asked. Jack began calculating in his mind. From buying the stores to signing the supply contracts, to the salaries and vehicles that he had bought. The amount that he'd spent for the grocery department to be stabilized was over a hundred million. Since they were talking here, there was no need for him to hide anything. I spent over a hundred and fifty million, Jack said. All of this was said calmly, as if it was normal for him to spend that amount of money. But who could blame him? He wanted his grocery to dominate the city. In other words, he wanted to monopolize the grocery market here in Encoet. So he had to spend. When Celine heard Jack's words, her eyes immediately revealed shock as she stared at Jack. It was true that Celine was shocked by the amount of money that Jack had invested in the grocery department. A hundred and fifty million, that wasn't a small amount of money. Although she had seen far big figures of money, she still thought that. This was a big amount to start a grocery in such a small city. There were several cities that were far bigger than Inchoate. And, if this a hundred and fifty million was used as capital, the groceries would definitely develop well. Even though there would be tougher competition in the big cities, at least, the income would be higher. Are you serious about that? Celine asked Jack while looking at him incredulously. Jack was confused by her expression at this moment. He wondered if what he had just said was magical. So, he could only reply by saying, I had to get the stores, get someone that could supply me with the groceries, get the vehicles that can be used for delivery, warehouses that have conditions that would ensure that the groceries would remain fresh. Jack went on to say what and what he bought. The more Celine heard his words, the more shocked she became. How rich is he? And, is he sure that he's not a prodigal? Is all of this depending on himself? As thoughts ran through her mind, she couldn't help but spit out some of them. Jack, is that just the grocery department? Considering the fact that, they're just beginning, and they don't have any influence, if they collapse, you'll end up losing everything. Upon hearing Celine's words, Jack smiled to himself. He couldn't help but think about the fact that he had the system. With it, although he would gain less profit, he wouldn't be able to make a loss. That was unless all his stores were robbed or burnt on the same day that he opened them. Otherwise, just a single week was enough for him to get all the money that he'd spent over a hundred times. But, although he had the system, there was no way that he was going to agree running a business that was full of losses. After all, he was doing a business and not a charity. And for that reason, he had made sure that all the things that he did were according to quality and not just about quantity. All the stores that he bought were located in good positions and their performance before he bought them were good. I've spent money to buy the already existing groceries. So, at the end of the day, I won't be adding competition for them. I'm going to reduce the number of competitors. I bought the groceries all over the city. They would retain the competitors, but if that competitor happened to be bought by me, then the competition would be reduced. Jack explained. When Celine heard his explanation, she finally understood why he was so sure about what he was doing. He made sure not to create new competitors. As for the original ones, he made up for that by improving the quality of his stores, making them the best. After chatting for a while, Jack came to know that the company that was started by Celine for her friend used a starting capital of a hundred million. By now, all the arrangements were completed. So, from next month, the company would start its operations. After that, Jack asked Celine if she knew where he could find a reliable manager or if she had a recommendation. Celine had been in business since she was about 16. Although at that time she was only handling small things, that didn't mean that she was idle. She knew many people in the almost four years that she's been in business. Yeah, I can recommend you to someone. But she's quite strict when it comes to handling things. Sometimes, she forgets that she's the one that has been employed the moment that the employer makes a bad decision. Celine said with a chuckle. For this very reason, she's been fired three times. The recent reason for her dismissal was that the owner of the company that she was managing had decided to suddenly increase the price of items that they were selling. At that time, they had suffered some losses and he wanted to recover. In the end, she refuted and said that, if he dared to do that, the business will close down. In the end, after a round of argument, the owner of the company was furious that he immediately dismissed her. When Jack heard her words, his eyes shone brightly. That was the person that he wanted. A decisive person that only thought of the company and not some people who only thought of flattering their bosses. She's perfect. Can you introduce her to me? Jack asked. Hiki, she will be here in about three days. Then, I'll let you meet her so that you can discuss about this. Celine replied. Jack had eight managers if Agnes was counted as one. He now wanted to get a manager that could manage all the business operations. 
This manager had to get those that could deal with sales, finance, and so on. Only in this way would the big burden that was on him be reduced or removed completely. Looking at the time, he found that it was nearing nine. But since he had made a decision to race with Ben, there was no way that he could keep him hanging. He still had some more money to win. As for the issues of buying shares, he decided against it for now. He would just use the stock market to do the purchase. Then, he would make sure to have a 100% ownership which would on turn make him the sole decision maker. Only in this way could he agree to pour his money into the company. After all, how could he allow some shareholders to enjoy profits that they haven't worked hard for? They exchanged contact information and agreed that Jack would come and pick her up from the hotel the following day at 10 in the morning. When they got back to the banquet hall, they found that Faith was finalizing talking about the company. Of course, the duo only looked into the hall from the door but didn't enter. After a few minutes, Faith finished whatever she was saying and thus ending the banquet. The bigwigs inside began interacting with each other as there were those that had come from other cities. On the other hand, the young masters began flirting with the ladies in the hall. After all, although they had come with a partner, that didn't necessarily imply that they were in a romantic relationship. Some were of course angry when they saw that someone was trying to seduce their partner while others were I don't cares. If not for the fact that they were inside Glaze Hotel, Jack was sure that there would have been a fight amongst these youths. As he watched the commotion, a group of people approached them. And upon seeing this, Selena immediately bid Jack goodbye and left together with Faith, heading to the eighth floor. It was obvious that they were staying in a presidential suite. The group that was approaching Jack had a young man leading them. This guy had a dark face that stated that he was ready to slaughter someone. But Jack completely ignored Ben's expression considering that. He was still angry with him calling him a dog, a stray one at that. He still had to make sure that this young master was going to suffer so that the arrogance that he'd accumulated would be dispelled. You've got some guts on you, kid. Ben started the moment that he arrived in front of Jack. His expression was like that of an aggressive gangster. Jack completely ignored his words as he looked at William and the others that were following behind Ben. You guys ready for a spin? Yeah, we're ready to win the race. William replied while looking at Ben's darkened face. He could even see that veins had already began popping up on Ben's face and neck. He could tell that Ben was really angry. And for this reason, he was happy that he could make a comeback. Ben didn't like the way that he was ignored. He went from being angry to being enraged. But he controlled his temper when he thought that there was still a race. When he thought of this, he smiled coldly as he stared at Jack and the others. He said, let's not waste our time. Let's get to the tracks and race. I want to end this as soon as possible. And with that, he left alongside his flunkies. William and the others snickered the moment that they heard these words. They couldn't wait for the show. Jack led the way as they headed towards the underground parking lot. Each and every one of them had their own cars parked down there. Jack, you were so amazing. You told us that you didn't come with a partner today. So it turned out that your partner was actually the hostess of the banquet. Yeah, this is not good, Jack. Look how you make us spend much time trying to think who would be your partner for the dance. In the end, you already had your partner here. Now we look as clowns. How we were just talking about matching him and her. Not just that. We even invited him to his own banquet. How amazing we are. Guys, actually, this is the third time that we are meeting. In fact, this is the first time that I'm talking to her. When Jack heard the nonsense that the group was spouting, he couldn't help but refute. But as usual, Jack's words were ignored. Actually, the group thought that he was just trying to lie his way out. So, they continued spouting more nonsense. Jack, who are you trying to kid here? The way that the two of you interacted doesn't look like two people who were trying to know each other, but as if the two of you knew each other long ago. Yeah, no matter what you say, we can't believe anything that you are going to use to escape from explaining to us. And what's more is that the two of you left the banquet hall and went to discuss something in private. You tell us, if the two of you have never spoken before, how could the hostess accept having a chat with you? At this point, Jack could only shake his head helplessly as he thought to himself, it seems that these people only believe when they are lied to. After all, this wasn't the first time that he had said the truth and they thought that he was lying to them. A good example would be the previous time that he participated in the race at Mount Bright. Although that wasn't the first time that he was driving a car, it was the first time that he participated in a race. And were it not for the fact that the system had granted him the professional driving skill, he would not have been able to beat both Steve and William's group. He would have been defeated thoroughly. By the way, I enjoyed seeing Ben's current face. Yeah. That guy is used to being so arrogant in that. 
Whenever he sees us, he looks for a way to make sure that he can show his strength in front of us. Now, after all the boasting that he did about being the hostess's partner, he ended up not even participating in the dance. Ha ha ha. You guys are right. As he bragged, he never thought that he was a monkey performing in front of Jack. I can't wait to see him losing again once he competes with Jack. That's right. Let's hurry up so that we can see him lose, apart from making him go back to his own city broke. By using the elevator, they arrived at the ground floor. From there, they took the elevator that led to the underground parking lot. This was the specialization that most of the buildings had in this era. This was just another security measure that they had implemented. After all, this would prevent people from sneaking in. As soon as they got to the underground parking lot, each and everyone in the group immediately went into his or her car. All those that had attended the banquet on this day were from rich families. Although they were not at the same level as their family background differ from each other. But at the end of the day, all those that had attended the banquet had a car that was worth at least a million dollars. Of course, this did not imply that they had bought the cars on a single day. There were some that had saved the money that they were being given for at least half a year or maybe a year before they could afford the cars that they were currently driving. This time, William and the others thought that Jack had come with his Bentley Continental GT. But, the moment that they saw him walking towards the Bugatti Veyron that had been parked not so far from their position, they were completely stunned. When they got to the underground parking lot before, each and every one of them had their minds fixed on how much they were going to earn after Jack won the race. So, the moment that they got to the underground parking lot, they had impatiently got into their cars, ready to drive towards Mount Bright. It was only William and the other four from the big five families of Inchoate City that remained. Seriously, Jack, how many secrets are you hiding? William could not help but blurt out this question. Not many at all. Jack replied with a shallow smile as he opened the doors of the Bugatti Veyron. The doors were like wings or a bird that was soaring in the sky. The moment that those who had already entered their cars noticed the commotion outside, they immediately rushed towards William and the others. They too were greatly shocked the moments that they set their eyes on the Bugatti Veyron. An ordinary Bugatti Veyron would have its price ranging 30 to 40 million dollars. And from the way that Jack's Bugatti Veyron looked like, it was pretty obvious that it was a customized one. So, it was only obvious that it would cost a lot more. Jack, can I take a look at its interior? William immediately released the girl that he was holding in his hand and rushed towards the Bugatti Veyron like a maniac. It was kind of understandable because all those present, really enjoyed racing. So, seeing a sports car really ignited their passion. Jack assented William's request. Upon Jack's agreement, not only William, but the entire group rushed towards the Bugatti Veyron to admire it. It was only when Jack reminded them that they were going to get late for the race that they came back to their senses. How much did you spend on getting this car? Anderson asked. Not that much. It should cost about $73 million. Jack replied nonchalantly. Although $73 million was a big amount of money, Jack was not the one that had paid this money. This was just a reward from the system after the qualitative increase of all the rewards that he had received from seven stores. But of course, the reaction of the group was completely different. The moment that they heard that the Bugatti Veyron cost almost $100 million, they were stunned speechless. As for Jack's words of the car not costing that much, they completely disregarded them. How could spending over $50 million for a luxury car not be a lot of money? If this was spent on buying a plot of land, they could accept it. But now, all this money was spent on buying a Bugatti Veyron, a sports car. According to their thoughts, this car could only be used for showing off. After about another five minutes of chattering, the group left the hotel as they headed towards Mount Bright. It took them more than 30 minutes to get there. Upon arrival, they found that Ben and his flunkies had already arrived and from their impatient look, it was obvious that they had arrived a long time ago, and they were waiting for them. But, the group did not care about his feelings at all. After all, they considered this race one already. Humph, I thought that you had chicken out. Ben stated the moment that he saw Jack and the others arriving at the management office, in charge of the racing competition. I was worried that you would have ran away the moment that we arrived. Turns out that you are not afraid of losing. Ismael snorted in return. Ha ha. Just you wait until the competition is over. Ben laughed in anger before entering the management office. William and the others snickered to themselves as they followed him. Peter had already been informed by Ben about what was going to happen today. Previously, Peter had thought that there would be no big racing when he heard about the banquet that was being held in the city. But who would have thought that these young masters would still come to compete? But 
All of this was fine for him as he was going to earn more. The moment that he knew who were going to compete, he looked at Ben with pity in his eyes. But all of this was just momentarily as his gaze shifted towards Jack. Mr. Jack, have you thought about my proposal? He asked with a smile. My answer still remains the same, Jack replied. Peter, on the other hand, could only shake his head helplessly. But he had to focus on the essence of today's issue. He already knew everyone present as they had already been here several times. Ben had been here to compete with William and the others. His skills were quite good. But when compared to who he was going to compete with, he was just a child. Go ahead and make your bets. I will record them down for you. Peter stated after taking out a book. Ben glared at Jack for a moment before revealing a cold smile. With his eyes still set on Jack, he stated word by word. If I win this race, I want you Jack to stay away from Miss Gravy. And another thing, I want you to kneel down at the center of the city and apologize to me. The moment that these words were stated, the crowd that was listening took a deep cold breath. The conditions that Ben had stated clearly made sure that Jack had no reputation left after he lost. On the other hand, the moment that Jack heard Ben mention Celine, his eyes turned cold. But he still remained calm and stated, no problem at all. The moment that Ben saw that Jack had accepted, he became ecstatic. The moment that he would have won the race, he would not only make sure that Jack would stay away from Celine, but would also have repaid the debt of embarrassment that he had suffered tonight. How many shares are in your hands? Jack asked. Ben frowned the moment that he heard this question. What about my shares? He asked. Since if I lose the race I will have my reputation stained, you have to pay something that is worth my reputation. So, for my bet, if you lose I want you to give me all the shares that you have in your hands plus $100 million. The moment that Jack stated his conditions, a thought ran through the minds of all present. Isn't this betting too exaggerated? 